What's up everyone, this is Matt Hafey here from the band Trivium. Today I'm gonna to show you some of my favorite riffs from across the Trivium catalog for my episode of Riff Lords. Throughout our history, we've used a little bit of six string standard and drop, seven string standard and drop. So today we're gonna to go across some of those tunings. We'll show you some of the favorite riffs that we've made across our career. Some things that I think that you will absolutely flourish from if you are able to learn these riffs and incorporate them into your regimen. Today we're gonna to start off with the Trivium song, Ember to Inferno off our first record, Ember to Inferno. When we first made this record and we first made this song, Trivium was actually a three-piece. So I was handling all rhythm and lead guitar playing duties and vocals. We had a bass player and a drummer. So a big thing with me was making parts that had rhythm and lead guitar essentially built into one part. It's a thing that I developed out of necessity because we didn't have two guitar players. We couldn't find a second guitar player at the time. And having that marriage of rhythm and melody within the same part, I think is quite interesting. And you'll see quite a bit of that happen on the song Ember to Inferno. Some of the other ones go even further into that, but it's a way you can realize you can rely on one guitar player versus having two in a band. I'm gonna show you the riffs here at full speed. <laughs> Here are the riffs from Embers from Inferno at half speed so you can see what's happening. <laughs> So for the verse, all down picking, that's the stuff that you expect when you hear in metal the thing I like to have in there that I don't know is always noticeable is the vibrato. I feel like vibrato is an incredibly useful thing to have, especially in leads, but to have it in rhythm as well is important because that riff is not as soulful if it were just to go. I feel like it doesn't have that nice feeling. So don't be afraid to incorporate some lead ideas into your rhythms. All E melodic minor, or E flat harmonic minor for me right now because we tuned down half a step live. It's running up the scale of the harmonic minor to the seven, nine, 10, 12. Now the third harmony you're hearing on the record is just three notes of the key higher. For that section. Next section abandons the down picking and goes for that nice melody. Back to down picking. Keeping the pedal tone but actually staying true to the pedal tone switch. Like that. And that's the verse. The verse 
mostly down picking, but goes in a little bit, a little bit of alternate picking. Pre-chorus section. Um, Pre-chorus section starts off with a. It's not just a. But a I do with an up pick for the second note, and the other note will be the third. Relatively simple, but it's all about the two different, the spread of the harmonies. Next section, the pre-chorus section, is using 0, 7, and 12 for this nice jazz chord. Drops from 12 on the pinky, down to 10 on the pinky, down to 9 with the ring, fin ring finger. Now, I can't remember if we do the on the record or not, but I think it adds some color to it. So if we didn't do it on the record, we do it live for sure. Chorus. While metal is typically always about as many things you could possibly hear at the same time, silence can have a big impact as well. So for this pre-chorus, having the... When I'm stopping live using a real cab, you need to make sure things are delicate. You can't crush down on it or you're really going to hear it. So, And I'm just lightly leaning all of the fingers across all the strings while being cognizant of the next notes that are happening. And it's lightly using actually both hands. All, the four, all four fingers are stretched across, and this one is dropping across the six as well to keep that silence. So as you can see in the rhythm guitar section of the verse, I had the pinky there pretty prevalent. In the pre-chorus, this will absolutely strengthen your, your pinky. Chorus as well. I'm hitting this three-noted power chord, where typically Trivium uses two-noted power chords or full chords. I'm using a three-note one in this, in this instance for the E. Sliding up on the fifth fret of the D vibratoing on the four. So there's that same theme of the vibrato, the vibrato motif. Now I'm using this added fifth chord for the C and for the D. Um, you could just do regular C, regular CD, but I feel like it sounds stronger. Having that rooted of the fifth on the bottom. Now the harmony, again, three notes being higher, that's why it's called a third. And there's the chorus. Now I'm going to play all of Ember to Inferno's riffs that I just showed you in halftime as well, and then back up to full speed. the riffs in full speed. <laughs>
The next song I want to take a look at is a song called Suffocating Sight off our second record, Ascendancy. On this record, we decided to go fully into drop D. This is one where I've always prided myself on being a great rhythm guitar player. I'd say that the shreddiest guy of this band is absolutely Corey. I'm a decent lead guitar player. My solos are more like dad solos, sticking in the pentatonic boxes and blues, things like that. But this song is one that even to the best lead guitar players of other bands, their arms have fallen. So this is a good song for you to learn. If you can learn this one, you can play anything. We'll take this from the verse to the pre-chorus into the chorus. And this is a fun song, so enjoy. It uses a lot of different rhythm guitar techniques I've talked about before with Ember to Inferno's mixing, down picking, and alternate picking. This one has this mutated chord version that we'll get, in, get into a little bit more, which I like a lot. So here we go. This is album speed of Suffocating Sight. <laughs> Suffocating sight at half speed. So with Suffocating Sight, the rhythm technique I'm using is um, people incorrectly, which is fine, I'm not out there to correct the incorrect use of the word triplet. That's a 16th note with the uh cut off, one E and uh. So the uh is cut off at the end. It has a grouping of three, but for it to be a triplet, it has to be ta 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 That's a sextuplet, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Sets of three in one note. So that is a three cluster of a 16th note with the fourth section cut off. Like that. What's important after that cluster of three is to have the proper down picking and hammer ons. What that looks like. So, what I'm doing is th the three cluster. I'm down picking on the fifth fret while I'm having everything barred. I'm five, six on the down. And I'm up picking on the eighth of the D back to a down pick on the six. So five, six, eight, six. All right, so this next section of the verse. Splitting the two sections up helps out a lot with understanding what the riff is. And it's all about that down, hammer, up, kick, kick. And on the ascension riff, technique I talk about a lot is down, 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 up, down for the rhythm. We know down picking, we know alternate, tremolo, but down, 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 up, down is the sound of John Williams Star Wars. I use that a lot in a lot of our songs. Down, 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 up, down, 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 down. And then alternate picking with the accentuations. After the pre-chorus section, it tails on. It's like a marching beat into the chorus. The chorus. What I'm 
I'm doing here, the chord is 5 5 8, then 5 5 7, then 5 5 5. To have that melody within the rhythm. And that's 1 1 1, 1 1 3, 1 1 5. Dropping off the low D on this, this chord, just playing 5 8 on the A and the D. 5 8, 5 7. Here's Suffocating Sight, slowed down. speed. The next song we're going to be looking at is a song called Incineration, The Broken World, off our record Vengeance Falls. This next song, fun riff, it sticks a little bit more in a harmonic minor key. I think it's a blast to play. Here it is. I'm going to take you through the intro, which is also the theme, verse, into the chorus. The chorus is a screamed chorus, which is interesting, and the pattern of the song is pretty different than the other ones. So this is, this is a very fun song to learn. It goes like this. <laughs> Half speed for those riffs.
This song and these riffs use a lot of different techniques all in one, a lot of different fingers, a lot of things happening, which is always why it's always been one of my favorite tracks off Vengeance. Main riff. So with this riff, it ascends up with the three, five, six on the A string, but all muted, and it comes on with an up pick with the tremolo as you've been seeing, or the, excuse me, the vibrato that you've been seeing consistent throughout the career. That is a hammer, or excuse me, a pull off and a hammer. It's very important to have an accentuation of the downbeats of things. So even if this, this riff is without an amp, you should have that attitude in the playing. So back to the riff. It ends with the for the first time. The second time, it shifts everything up one step to a bigger stretch. It'd be I use the ring finger pulling off to the pointer finger on 5-7 on the D. And then it has 9 and 6 over here on the A. First riff, super simple, big open power chords, except for obviously the C note, which is tremolo picked. And that is using the first two bottom notes of a drop D chord, but then having an octave on the fifth fret of the D that spans five on the D and eight on the B. Going back to that major resolution on the four. Then it chokes up. The chorus of this section. Like that. So, all down picking. It's kind of a difficult harmonic to hit that second fret on the G, but it's three and two. Some, some notes work better for harmonics than others. That section. It's a weird jumper and it made sense to me when I wrote it, but sometimes it doesn't make sense to me, but open five, four, open one, four, open seven, five, open seven, eight, then the harmony, the harmonic, excuse me. And there are all the riffs. Here's Incineration, The Broken World, slowed down. And here it is, album speed. The 
next set of wrists we'll be exploring is from a song called Into the Mouth of Hell We March from our fourth record, Shogun. As people can see, we swapped to seven string. We started using the seven string on our third record, The Crusade. We did it for, I believe, three or four songs off the record. We did it on Becoming the Dragon and Sadness was here, Contempt Breeds Contamination, and the nine minute instrumental song, The Crusade. So with this, I'm tuned half a step flat, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat for what we do live. Shogun itself is tuned to B standard. Um, it was the In Waves record where we actually started tuning everything down half a step. So that would have been our fifth record. But on the fourth record, we're still in standard. We still use standard six string in E standard and seven string in B standard. So into the mouth of hell we march. I'll show you the riffs in album tempo and then slower. We're gonna go from the intro into the verse and the pre-chorus. Here are those riffs. <laughs> Those riffs a little bit slower. This song has a lot of imagery to it. Um, a big thing with writing is I always like to be inspired by things that I can't make or things that I can't do. Um, I remember writing this intro section. <laughs> Actually, on a Petrucci seven string, the one we did the crusade on, on a park bench in Copenhagen. It was just a nice day and I decided to make something that sounds very ominous and metal. There's a lot going on in this track. You can see there's a lot of pinky stuff happening. My pinky looks pretty crazy like that because I actually broke it um, in high school with a guitar player friend of mine who was in the band Mindscar. We found one set of boxing gloves and I wore the right one and he wore the left one and he punched this pinky and it broke. But the way it was broken, it healed in a way that it goes much higher than it should. So when I'm playing like leads or, you can see that it goes so much higher than it's supposed to. But anyways, for these riffs, it's an octave chord on the low B. So it's one and three right there on the B and the A. Now, for some reason, I decided to just add this insane stretch, which I don't know why, but it just made it sound interesting where here it has the power chord that's the C, but it also has the octave that is the low C. And with that tritone on the higher C chord, I felt that it sounded very interesting and very ominous. There's a lot of motion in this rhythm guitar playing. 
put the slide up on the, the octave. This is an open 2-4. The slide up to the five on the D string. A lot of motion, a lot of things happening, and Corey is also playing the lead guitar melody of the intro on top of that. So there's, there's a couple parallel movements happening there. The verse itself, it used the same structure from the intro but goes in and out of all sorts of different rhythm guitar picking. And there's quite a bit of string skipping as well. So I'm skipping the E there. And I'm using a pedal tone of this low C into this higher C chord. And then I'm making a three on the E and a two on the A. I don't know how or why I wrote it this way, it just was natural the way I came up with this part. It's very important, again, back to the picking with attitude to not just for the sound, but to help you separate what's happening with the parts itself. Pre-chorus is back into working stamina. Um, once you have the pattern. It's pretty repetitive, so it's a matter of getting that motion down with the metronome, making sure you can sit for the stamina of it, mastering it slowly, working your way up. So here's into the mouth of hell, roughly half speed into full speed. next song is our Grammy nominated song, Betrayer. It's one that I felt like mixes very interesting things and mixes a bit of the Swedish melodic death metal that we've always been influenced in to a little bit of punk, a little bit of metal, a little bit of death metal. It's all in there. It's very trivial in the fact that it has a bit of everything. So here are some of the riffs, album speed, and we'll slow them down. <laughs>
Slower. So with this song, the intro is all tremolo picked. It's very important to get very tight tremolo picking. Um, there are anchors that I use in different parts of the guitar playing. For the tremolo picking, I'm generally wrapping the high E string with my pinky as I tremolo pick. And you can see that I almost get this Velociraptor thing going on with my rhythm, or excuse me, yeah, my, my right hand as I lift up. You can also do tremolo from here without the without the anchor, without the velociraptoring, but I feel like it's not quite as tight. Here you can float above while still having that anchor pivot point of using your hand. I talked about before of having that accentuation of the downbeats. When you hear the measure changes, basically. Um, starting tremolo picking on the G string is kind of strange because I find that tremolo picking is easier with the heavier the string that it is. Um, so I'm floating, I've got the pick, pinky anchor. It's about keeping that very tight, each note cluster very tight. One of the hardest things to do is actually to go from that tremolo picking into this alternate picking of a slower pattern. Even though it's an easy part, it's hard to jump off from them. Definitely practice that. The verse is held out for the first section for the bass to do its thing. The second part is doing single notes, something we do quite a bit. Part with that much silence requires tight noise gate, not too much gain. I typically have a fret wrap up here as well for live and for studio situations, just to minimize as much note noise as humanly possible while still being able to hit it with attitude. Uh, the next section, just all straight down picking. Again, really separate and add the attack at the bottom and the top of the measures. You really want to feel the changes. The chorus is punk picked. I pick it in a way that is sloppy in the sense that it's hitting all the strings, but I'm also muting those extra strings while I'm hitting them. So it's kind of sloppily picked on purpose to get that attitude, but I'm also using the pinky to block out the top strings, and I'm using the, the top of my pointer finger and the middle finger itself to block out the B. And it's back to that emphasis of make sure the technicality is there and the playing is precise, but do have that attitude in the right hand to really feel the music. With that said, here's Betrayer a little bit slower and then album speed. Here we go.
This next riff is from a song called What the Dead Men Say, off a record with the same name. Uh, this one explored all sorts of sonics. We hit multiple different tunings on this one, six string, seven string, drop D. We also had drop seven string, which is basically the same idea as a six string drop D, except you're drop Aing the seven string. This track is in B flat standard. This is what the dead men say. We're gonna take this album speed, a little bit slower. I'm gonna take it from once the tremolo picking comes in off the intro of the song nine. <laughs> This song has a lot of riffs, this song has a lot of very identifiably trivium things, but also some new things, I feel, that we explore. This opening riff is in B Phrygian harmonic minor. It starts like this. <laughs> So what's happening there is it's all about the vibrato. It's about the push and pull of muting and open. You'll hear the these rakes the way this is done. You have the pick in a completely perpendicular angle to all the strings. You need to have it lightly muted like we did in Ember 2 Inferno lesson. You can also move the hand. Sometimes it does a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't. The transition to the verse. That separates Corey and I into two different parts. He plays a rhythm guitar part, and I play, obviously, this thing. The reason why we switched, it was one of those things where I mentioned previously with band pre-production, that a riff that difficult, that strange for playing didn't make sense. So I was like, if I played something over here, I'd be able to sing and play this thing very well. Now, this is using these almost classical three-noted chords that feel classical, feels black metal to me at times as well, with the, the attack of it. And it's just that stuff. And this section of the song shifts in E harmonic minor. The next riff. It's a fun riff. It doesn't do what Into the Mouth of Hell We March does, but it does skip moments of the down picking. So instead of all being down picked, it plays a bit with hammer-ons, pull-offs, complete legato in the... Like, that's one pick. I actually wrote this riff as a theme song for 
Twitch streamer Shroud, who's one of my favorite streamers, Tribus' favorite band, and one day I mentioned, hey, I could write a theme for you for this year, this month that he used for a bit. So that was actually a riff that I wrote for him that we later on grabbed and put into this song itself. The chorus goes back to very Ember to Inferno style chorus. You can see it all comes back around into the that's C into open E, but using the using the top three strings as well. Here's what the dead men say, slow, and then album speed. These next riffs are from our song In the Court of the Dragon, from our 10th record, In the Court of the Dragon. For our last three records, everyone has been able to see that we have really allowed anything and everything that we've wanted to do with Trivium be there. It's not that we didn't do that before, but records one through seven all had vastly different styles. Like if you compare record one to four, or four to six, or six to two, or three to seven, they all sounded like Trivium, but incredibly different aspects of what Trivium is. Sin in the sentence, what the Dead Men Say, and in the Court of the Dragon, we've allowed the combinations of everything that we've done in the past all to be there and allow it to go where we want. In the Court of the Dragon, the song itself, the record itself, it's been pretty crazy that record 10 people are saying that, hey, this could be some of the best material, or if not the best record that Trivium has done. That's not something you normally hear on record 10, and that's exciting to hear and exciting to see. Same thing for us. So this song, this record, riffs are incredibly fun to play. They're all over the place as far as our category goes. When I play this song, I think a little bit about Ember to Inferno in the verse. I think about In Waves in the, the Scream chorus. I think of Sin in the Sentence for the Sung chorus. It has all of the Trivium genealogy all in one track. So here is the riffs, album speed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
same riffs, slower. So this riff, very in wavesy in the sense that it's a simple vocal pattern, but the music a little bit more complex than it was. So this is in B minor. Back to that vibrato thing we've been seeing since the first record. Verse riff, very Ember to Inferno era trivium in the fact that it's all down picking, but what's interesting is the different utilizations of pedal tones that we did this time around. Typically, I feel like with a riff that's inspired by the Gothenburg Swedish melodic death metal scene where it'd have the... It would use those. And I find what's interesting is that this sounded so nice ascending actually the the B flat minor key scale. And then the way that looks. So this same melody is happening down here too. We just shifted it down so that we can use the second fret as the pedal tone. That's the melody and the rhythms underneath that. The section that's the pre-chorus to the singing chorus is just actually stepping up every single note that's actually in key of B flat minor. <laughs> And that's a very Shogun Trivium riff. The next section, Corey's playing a melody to this, and I'm separating two. On the record initially, I did the full black metal chord. But Josh felt it was better to separate, so we separated the notes out to those, and it ended up, I think, being just the bottom two notes of the chord that are on the, the record itself. We always like to try a lot of things and some things make it, some things don't. So it's important to play while you're in the studio, but it's also important to set the maps up before you ever set foot in the studio. We always make sure that it's, before it was the old rehearsal place we used to be in. And when we do record 11, it'll be everything of the record 11, we will have muscle memorized here at rehearsal before we ever record the thing. I think that's very important. Some producers don't like that because they like it to be malleable and that is important for certain bands to be malleable in the studio. But I feel like a band like Trivium, a metal band, they need to come having done their homework and knowing everything muscle memory. I make sure I know at least 95 to 90% 90 of the words by heart before recording anything. So it's it becomes a much more effortless procedure doing the record. The last record took us, I think, two weeks to record the entire thing. Whereas typically you want a budget like two to three to four months to do a record, but we came in incredibly rehearsed. Here's in the Court of the Dragon, a bit slower. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And here it is at Alpen Speed. <laughs> Thank you so much everyone for watching my Riff Lords on GTV. It's been an absolute blast. I hope you got an insightful look into seeing the tracing of the rough chronology of Trivium of where we started at and where it's ended at. I've always loved that Ember to Inferno, the song and the record, remind me of sections of In the Court of the Dragon. I think it's cool that you could see that past, present, and future in the band. Anyone who's ever seen anyone do something. Let's say you have a hero, you have a guitar player that you want, you admire, that you want to be like, or a front man or a band that you love and that you've always aspired to be like. Anything you've seen someone else do, you can do as well. You just have to put the work into it. That's the thing I always want to encourage everyone and encourage all of you viewers to know that if you've seen someone do something on guitar or vocals and you say, wow, I wish I could do that, I'll never be able to do that, you've already stopped yourself and hindered yourself a bit. You can do it because someone else has done it and your goal should be to top your heroes, to be even better than your heroes. So look at what they do, and if you want that, I would also encourage to not do something like your hero. I'd say use that as a springboard to get the start. Don't try to sing like your favorites. Maybe start by singing their songs, but then start finding your own voice, finding your own voice vocally, finding your own voice guitar-wise, and aspiring to be that, and making the path carved out the way you see fit, not the way it was fit for someone else. So that's, that's the main message I hope to inspire all of you with, that if you want to make music, do it. Stop saying, I need to do this, this, and this first. Or if you want to start streaming or making songs or recording records or making video, making content, whatever it may be, don't say, I will start once I do this. Just begin. Begin now and stop waiting. So pick up a guitar, start playing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.